belfries tugged by bishops and storks. And they rang their tidings over the bandaged town, over the frozen foam of the powder and ice cream hills, over the crackling sea. It seemed that all the churches boomed for joy under my window, and the weathercocks crew for Christmas on our fence. Get back to the post. They were just ordinary postmen, fond of walking and dogs and Christmas and the snow. They knocked on the doors with blue knuckles. Ours has got a black knuckle. And then they stood on the white welcome mat in the little drifted porches and huffed and puffed, making ghosts with their breath and jogged from foot to foot like small boys wanting to go out. And then the presents. And then the presents after the Christmas and the cold postman with a rose on his button nose tingled down the tea tray slithered run of the chilly glinting hill. He went in his ice-boned boots like a man on fishmonger's slabs. He wagged his bag like a frozen camel's hump, dizzily turned the corner on one foot, and by God he was gone. Get back to the presents. There were the useful presents, engulfing mufflers of the old coach day. Mittens made for giant slopes. Zebra scarves of a substance like silky gum that could be tug of war down to the galoshes. Blinding tam shanters like patchwork tea cozies and bunny suited busbies and balaclavas for victims of head shrinking tribes. From aunts who always wore wool next to the skin, there were moustached and rasping vests that made you wonder why the aunts had any skin left at all. Once I had a little crocheted nose bag from an aunt now, alas, no longer winning with us. And pictureless books in which small boys, though warmed with quotations not to, would escape on Farmer Giles's pond and did and drown. And books that told me everything about the worst. Bags of moist and many-coloured jelly babies, and a folded flag and a false nose and a tram conductor's cap, and a machine that punched tickets and rang a bell, never a catapult. Once, by a mistake that no one could explain, a little hatchet, and a celluloid duck that made when you pressed it a most unduck-like sound, a mewing moo that an ambitious cat might make who wished to be a cow. And a painting book in which I could make the grass, the trees, the sea, and the animals any color I please. And still the dazzling sky blue sheep are grazing in the red field under the rainbow with billed and pea green birds. Hard boils, toffee, fudge, and all sorts, crunches, cracknel, humbugs, glaciers, marzipan, and butter Welsh for the Welsh. And troops of bright tin soldiers who, if they could not fight, could always run. And snakes and families and happy ladders and easy hobby games for little engineers, complete with instructions. Oh, easy for Leonardo. And a whistle to make the dogs bark, to wake up the old man next door, to make him beat on the wall with his stick, to shake our picture off the wall. And a packet of cigarettes. You put one in your mouth and you stood at the corner of the street and you waited for hours in vain for an old lady to scold you for smoking a cigarette and then with a smirk you bit it. And then it was breakfast under the moon. Were there uncles like in our house? There are always uncles at Christmas, the same uncles. And on Christmas mornings with dog-disturbing whistle and sugar fags, I would scour the swathed town for the news of the little world and find always a dead bird by the post office or the white deserted swings. Perhaps a robin, all but one of his fires out. Men and women wading, scooping back from chapel with taproom noses and wind-busked cheeks, all albinos, huddled their stiff black jarring feathers against the irreligious snow. Mistletoe hung from the gas brackets in all the front parlours. There was sherry and walnuts and bottled beer and crackers by the dessert spoons. And cats in their fur abouts watched the fires. And the high-heaped fires spat, all ready for the chestnuts and the mulling pokers. 
some few large men sat in the front parlors without their collars, uncles almost certainly trying their new cigars, holding them out judiciously at arm's length, returning them to their mouths, coughing, then holding them out again as though waiting for the explosion. And some few small aunts, not wanted in the kitchen, nor anywhere else for that matter, sat on the very edges of their chairs, poised and brittle, afraid to break, like faded cups and salt. 